Hello, I'm Dr. Alan Brunning, and welcome to your Prescription for Health. I'm Dr. Alan Grunning and welcome to your Prescription for Health. This is our second show. I hope you had the opportunity to join me last week. If you did not, we're going to have the shows archived on our website, um, prescriptionforhealth.tv. Um, but basically what we talked about last week was uh, who I was, uh, how did I get to this point on my medical and spiritual journey to be in front of you on camera at WRXY TV doing this local weekly show, TV show, devoted to holistic health and healing. It's the only one of its kind. I hope that you'll take the opportunity to spread the word to all of the people on your email list, your Facebook contacts, the people that you know at church or wherever, to tell them to watch this show because they're gonna get all kinds of important information to get healthy. Today we're gonna be looking at the problems that we're facing here in America and, and the issues that we're going to be dealing with in subsequent shows as we develop a treatment program, a comprehensive treatment program to get us all better. So we're going to cut to our first um, slide here and take a look at some of the problems that we're dealing with. So the first thing we notice is that obesity is a worldwide health epidemic affecting young and old. And we're going to go into each one of these in greater detail in just a moment. No one can argue with the fact that we have a real problem with our weight in this country. And it's not just here. This has now been exported throughout the world. The people in the, in the Middle East, Far East, whatever, they're all getting bigger too. So this is an important issue. Metabolic syndrome and diabetes are near epidemic levels. You know, in the past, you probably never really heard that many people that you knew were diabetic. Those of you that are older, now everybody's got diabetes. And, and so where is this all heading to? We're going to take a closer look at that. Third thing is that cancer seems to be affecting every family. You know, when I was growing up, I didn't hear that much about cancer. It seems like everybody in everybody's family, now you, all you hear about is cancer this or cancer that. So we've got to find out where this is all coming from and what we can do about it. Cardiovascular disease is still the leading cause of death in the United States. We have not made a big dent on this problem. People are still having heart attacks and strokes and all kinds of vascular problems. Why is that? Thyroid and autoimmune disorders are increasing at an alarming rate, and we're going to talk about in a minute what those are and why this is happening to us. A lot of you probably have thyroid disease or you were told maybe you had thyroid disease, well this is at epidemic levels as well and so we have to come up with a plan to correct this. And finally, this is the big problem, people complain that they are fatigued, that they have no energy, they're in pain and they can't sleep well. This is the common complaints that I hear in my practice. Of course, my practice is dealing a lot with people with fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue and autoimmune disorders. But this is what primary care physicians are healing too, are hearing too, is that people are just exhausted. I don't know if that's plaguing any of you out there, but it was plaguing me in the past. And clearly I had chronic fatigue syndrome and I see lots of patients with this or who are just exhausted. And so we're going to talk about why that is and what we can do to get that better. So let's go ahead and just launch into this. And the first thing that we want to deal with is obesity. So using the body mass index of 25 to 30, which is what the government uses as an estimate of overweight, and over 30 as obese, then more than one-third of adults in the United States and 17% of our children and adolescents are obese. That's very disturbing. That wasn't the case in the past. You know, if you look at videotapes or movie reels, whatever, of uh, people back in the 40s and 50s and even 60s, you didn't see a lot of obese people. What in the world has happened in this country? The next thing is that adults age 60 and over are more likely to be obese than younger adults. That wasn't always the case. 
And also, men and women are equally obese. Uh, that wasn't always the case either. Um, but clearly, as you get older, you're at greater risk for developing this problem of obesity. Twelve states have an obesity prevalence of over 30 percent. Mississippi, where my son goes to school, and he attests to this, uh, is 34 percent. So clearly, there are some states that are having more of a problem with this than others. They tend to be in the South, um, which is unfortunate. So we have to find out why that is and what we're going to do about it. And next, a new study that was just published by Life Extension shows that the, this body mass index that we've been talking about is actually inaccurate, especially in women, and that something called serum leptin levels and measurement of body fat are actually more accurate. So if we use those measures, the obesity epidemic is even greater than what we are being told. This is very scary. Next, we're going to take a look at the causes of the obesity epidemic. So clearly, by, by far, as far as I'm concerned, the biggest cause is genetically modified wheat. Now, most of you are probably not that familiar with why this thing is so bad for you, okay? This, bo this box of pasta is death on a plate. So why is that? Why is, why is wheat, bread, pasta, all these things so bad for us? You know, wheat is a biblical grain. If you read through the Old Testament, Israel's cycles, uh, harvest cycles, were all built upon the cycles of wheat harvest and barley harvest. So, so wheat is a biblical grain that's extremely essential for many populations in the world. Why is it so detrimental to us here in the United States? And the reason is because of the way companies have genetically modified it. And this began in the 50s and 60s, and it's continued on to increase crop yield and to uh, make the uh, uh, wheat more disease resistant. But along the way, they've changed the wheat so that now it doesn't even look like wheat anymore. And so when you eat it, it doesn't act like wheat in your body. It acts like a poison. It acts like a toxin. In fact, it's a very high glycemic food. And so as you eat wheat, you're actually wheat eating something that's extremely bad for your blood sugar and for your body. And this is one of the wheat reasons that we're having an obesity epidemic. And we're going to talk more about this um, next week. The second thing is high fructose corn syrup. Well, where do you find that? Everywhere. I mean, all you got to do is read labels in your pantry or your refrigerator, and you're going to see high fructose corn syrup in a lot of places. So what's so bad about this? This little can of soda here, and I'm not going to name what it is. Why is this such a bad thing? It's because of the sugar in it in the form of fructose. Fructose, d despite what the commercials tell you, is not just another sugar. It is a poison. And we're going to talk about that more again later. But suffice it to say, you sh you've got to get that out of your life because it is a big cause of the obesity epidemic. This um, began to be infused into our food chain in the late 70s, and that's exactly when the obesity epidemic began. So clearly, there's a relationship there. Third thing is sugar-sweetened beverages. Now, this is not just sodas. So this little can of juice or this juice box. This is not good either, and we're force-feeding these to our children, thinking we're doing something healthy for them. But let me assure you, the concentrated fructose that's in here is harming them. And, and studies that have been done on inner-city children clearly show that the more of these juice boxes and concentrated fruit juices that they drink, the worse their brain function and the lower their test scores. So clearly there's a problem there. The next problem that we have to deal with is diet sodas and foods. Let me tell you that diet sodas, diet foods, are poisons. Uh, they've been infused with all kinds of bad things, and you have to get them out of your life. But they actually cause obesity. Uh, you would think, okay, I'm having a diet drink or a diet food. It must help my blood sugar, and it must be better for me to lose weight. Well, actually, studies show clearly that it's not. It's actually making you worse. You're actually going to gain weight by eating diet foods and drinking diet soda. The next item that's responsible for the obesity epidemic is toxins, specifically plastics, pesticides, and other organic toxins. We have numerous studies now that have been done on populations in America, especially in western Michigan, that show that the higher the level of plastics in your body, the higher the weight you'll have, and the higher the level of diabetes incidence there is in that population. Clearly, plastics and pesticides poison our metabolism and ruin our health. So that's another big cause of obesity. 
Another problem is we have increased caloric intake from fast food. Um, you know, when I was growing up, fast food was starting to come about and, and take on a prominent role here in America. Well, it's gotten way out of control. And so fast food is like a huge problem for us now. And, and the food is nutritionally void for the most part. And it's got a lot of calories and a lot of salt and uh, high fructose corn syrup and other things that are bad for us. So fast food is not the way to go. Decreased activity level is another problem. Uh, clearly, we're not getting as much exercise as we used to do. Uh, thyroid disease has gotten way out of control, and thyroid hormone controls your metabolism. If your thyroid is not working right, if it's low, your metabolism is going to be low, you can't burn calories, and you're going to gain weight. And you won't, won't be able to easily lose the weight. And so that's another cause for the obesity problem that we're having. Sleep deprivation. We know that as people are not sleeping well, they actually gain weight and they can't lose weight. Stress and adrenal disease, as you become more stressed, you secrete cortisol, uh, which causes you to gain weight, especially around the midsection. We certainly live in a society of stress more than any generation in the past, so that's contributing also. As well as hormone imbalances, which are rampant in our society now because of all of the hormones that are in the food, that are um, in the environment, and the pesticides, and this is causing tremendous imbalances in our body. So let's take a look at um, what we should weigh. Now it's hard, it may be difficult for you to see this chart, but these are Metropolitan Life Insurance Company height and weight charts from 1983. Let me assure you guys, these charts have not changed just because we're 20 something, 30 years later. I mean, this should still be what we weigh. And if you look at those, that chart, and let's go back to that, you can try to find your weight on there, or your height on there. And I'm six foot and medium frame, and according to this, I should weigh 157 to 170 pounds. That's the normal for a six foot man in this country. How many people do you know, or maybe you, weigh that? Um, if we go to the next slide, this is the one for women. And you can see as you plot along here and look at an average five foot four medium frame woman, she should weigh 124 to 138. That's pretty disturbing for most of you women out there because you probably don't weigh that. And so we have to decide that the new normal is not normal. This is what we really should weigh, and anything over that is overweight or obese depending upon how much over it you are. And that's not good for your health. So what are the health effects of being overweight and obese? There's numerous things. Coronary heart disease, type 2 diabetes, cancers, especially endometrial breast and colon cancer, hypertension, peripheral vascular disease, stroke, liver and gallbladder disease are directly a result of being overweight and obese, sleep apnea and respiratory diseases, osteoarthritis, hormone imbalances, abnormal menstrual periods, infertility, all these things are a result of being obese or overweight. And one of the problems that we're dealing with uh, as a direct result of that is something called metabolic syndrome. So we'll take a look at that. About 47 million Americans have metabolic syndrome, which is one out of six people. So what is it? According to the American Heart Association and the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute, metabolic syndrome is present if you have three or more of the following signs. Uh, so the first one is blood pressure equal to or higher than 130 over 85. In other words, you're hypertensive. The second is a fasting blood sugar higher than 99, which means then that you have abnormal blood sugar, you're insulin resistant. A large waist circumference, and that's defined here as men over 40 uh, inches and women over 35 inches. A low HDL cholesterol, which is the good cholesterol, and so if that's under 40 for men or under 50 for women, that's not a good thing. And then the big thing is triglycerides equal to or higher than 150. Triglycerides, not cholesterol, is really the big problem. And so all these things of metabolic syndrome increase your risk of coronary artery disease, stroke, and type 2 diabetes, none of which is a good thing. Well, we're going to take a little break here before we move on and uh, go and uh, meet our sponsors and talk, uh, see a little bit about what they're doing to support this show and learn more about what they have to offer you.